Hi YouTube family, my name is Alicia English and welcome to my channel. Today I'm working on a custom order for a client. I get lots of requests for wedding guest signboards and so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make one for this custom today in this video. During this video, I'm gonna show you how simple it is to make your very own. couple things that I really like about getting custom orders for weddings is that not only have they asked me to create something special for their very important day, but I love that they're going to be able to use this in their home later on after the wedding. So it serves more than one function. So I've got a bunch of three inch wide strapping boards. So let's get started. So I want to make sure that all of my boards are cut to 36 inches. I predicted that I need about seven slats to create about 22 inches in height for this board. I'm going to use my dual orbital sander and I'm going to sand all of the boards and make sure they're super smooth before I apply stain. Now I'm going to stain the boards with this beautiful medium brown stain. I'm going to let these boards dry while I go and prepare the stencil using my Silhouette Cameo. Now I'm going to turn all of my boards over so that I have the back up and then I'm going to put it together using a few strap boards in my brad nailer. some wood glue on the back before I fire my nails in. I just like to use the tape so the edges aren't all curling up when I'm trying to weed. So normally what I do is I weed out all of the lettering that would say this name says Justin and Ashley. So normally I would take out all the letters and just leave in all the centers of all of the letters. This time I'm gonna do it reverse. So I wanna take all the outside because I want all of the normal letters. So you can see there that I've left the word Justin. And I'm gonna take out the centers of this letter here. So using another piece of contact paper that doesn't have anything printed on it, I'm going to use it as transfer tape to transfer my letters onto the board. So you can see there's no nothing cut on it. I want to move all these letters that I saved onto a piece of transfer tape. So you can see that it's grabbed all of my letters, all of it together. So now there's nothing on here, it's totally blank. And all of my lettering has been grabbed by my transfer tape here. Following my chalk line, I know that I need my letterings for the names to be here and my dates to be on here. So I'm just going to center it from here to here and place it on. And then I'm going to leave the lettering down and remove my transfer tape. Sometimes this takes a little bit of guiding with your fingers, especially when your font is really tiny. Save some vinyl using really big shapes. You can just use some newspaper, and in case I'm gonna make a big heart, so I'm gonna put a couple pieces of newspaper together. Then I'm gonna fold it in half. and cut out the heart shape that I'm going to need. I'm just gonna add a little bit more tape so that I can use it as a stencil. So my client would like the heart sort of hanging off of the board. And so I'm going to line up my heart where I want and then I'm going to put some tape around the outer edge so that it doesn't shuffle while I'm stenciling. I've rolled some tape and so under some of the edges where I can't really stick some tape on the outside, I'm just going to stick a few little rolled up pieces to ensure that it doesn't move. So now the fun part where we get to apply our white paint, we're going to have our lettering show through a stain and we're gonna have a great big white heart. So I'm going to use a makeup sponge and a very, very little bit of white paint and I'm going to go over the whole area. You wanna use minimal paint for this. You don't want any bleeding in the end. So I'm having to blot off a lot of the paint. And I'm gonna go very gently all the way around first. 
You can see I have next to no paint on my sponge. So I did about two all over coats with my white paint. And if you want a more solid heart, you can do several more coats, just allowing them to dry a little bit in between. And just remember, really, really light coats. But since I want this rustic, shabby chic look, I'm going to now peel off my stencil and be happy with my two coats. As you can see, I got a nice crisp part even using the newspaper just because I used really light coats of paint. Now I'm going to remove my lettering and fingers crossed I have no bleeding. turned out. It's going to look totally finished off when all of their guests sign it with a white paint marker. After this is all signed, my client will be recommended to use a little bit of clear wax to finish it off. One of the things that I love about having a handmade business is that I get to create custom pieces that are going to last a lifetime for my clients. If you love love, then hit that like button. If you like this DIY video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also click the notification bell so YouTube lets you know when my next awesome DIY is coming up. On tomorrow's video, I'm going to show you how I turn trash into treasure.